So today we're going to talk about one more other element that you should consider when designing the agents for your agent-based model. And we've alluded this, to this before, uh, but you have to choose the level at which you're going to actually create the agents themselves. Now, it doesn't even have to be the same level for every agent type in the model, uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but as we mentioned before, an agent doesn't necessarily have to be uh, an individual or an employee or a person on the street or something like that. It can be uh, a corporation. It can be an organization. It could be um, an animal. It could be a cell. It could be whatever, right? Um, so here, just as an illustration, I have two different models of, uh, of that were created in the medical field, right? And so on the left, uh, we have this uh, tumor model. Uh, a model of a uh, you're looking at cancer right and as you can see right um essentially well maybe it's not completely obvious but each of these little dots represents a cell right and so the agents in this model are cells right over here we have an aids model right a model of aids transmission in a community or an organization a society right and in this case each of the little agents is represented by a human being a person right and so it's interesting to me, you have two different models, both kind of, of disease-related phenomenon, right? Uh, but in one case, you have the model being done at the person level, and at the other case, the cellular level, right? So why, why would you choose these two different uh, levels? Well, one of the, the main reason is because of the question they were interested in answering. In the tumor model, um, they're essentially looking at how different treatments can affect uh, tumor growth. And in the HIV model, the AIDS model, they were looking at how um, HIV propagation happens throughout an entire community, right? So they're, they're very different kinds of goals, and in each case they chose the level of an agent to correspond to the research question they were interested in asking, right? And so that's why you get these two different level choices. Uh, and by the way, both of these models are available in the NetLogo Models Library. Okay, so um, one other thing we should talk about is you know, we've talked about agents, uh, but there are kind of a couple of special words that are often thrown around in the agent-based modeling literature that relate to different types of agents that aren't your traditional form of agents. So one word that's thrown around is a meta-agent, right? And a meta-agent is an agent that's composed of other agents. So for instance, you could imagine you have a business uh, and you have the business uh, represented as an agent interacting with other businesses, right? But then maybe within that business, you have different departments and those different departments take different actions and those different actions are part of the business organization, right? Uh, but aren't directly, um, but, it's just, but, the, but the business is not just the composition of all those departments, right? Uh, and then you could even go lower than that, right? You could have within the departments, you could have employees, right? And those employees could be agents. Um, and so you can have that, uh, and you know, the kind of old joke is it's turtles all the way down because they're still agents, right? Each of these different levels, they're just agents who are composed or include other agents within them. Uh, and there is a, there's a special command in that logo called tie that kind of helps you do some work with meta agents. Uh, and I'm gonna pause right now just to show you a brief bit of that. Okay, so here I'm gonna show you how to use the tie command, which is one that might be useful when you're trying to work with meta agents, right? Uh, so if you're gonna tie two agents together, the first thing you need is a couple of agents, and you can tie more than two, but in this case, we're only gonna tie two. So we're gonna create two turtles, and we're gonna set their size to three. We're gonna ask those turtles to move forward five, to kind of separate them out a little bit, right? And then we're gonna ask turtle zero to create a link with turtle one. And here I'm using kind of one of the unique features of NetLogo, which is that the first agent ever created is called turtle zero, and the next agent is turtle one, and so forth and so on. Now, I don't recommend normally that you address the turtles directly by their turtle number because of the fact that it makes your model somewhat brittle, right? Because turtles are, agents are created and destroyed all the time, and every time they get a new turtle number. And so as a result, if you use turtle numbers in a traditional model, your model may not work very well. It may break occasionally, it may do things you don't expect. Not to say you can't use them, but it just, it, it's, it's more likely that it won't work well. So, um, but here, because we're only gonna use two agents, I'm gonna delete this model right away. It's just a quick little example. It's okay to use it this way. Now we're gonna give that link a command, right? Which we haven't given many links commands, but in this case, we're gonna give that link a command, which is tie. 
And that command tells that link that it is not a traditional NetLogo link. So a traditional NetLogo link would stretch and move based upon where the point endpoints moved. But this one says, no, you're like a physical link. You are actually like a steel bar connecting these two agents, right? And so if one of them moves, you have to move and you have to move the other turtle along with it in order to reflect the movement of that first agent, right? Now it's not super obvious that where it is, so I'm gonna make it a little bigger. You can do the little expect command on it. And I can, for instance, change its thickness to size one makes it a little more obvious. That's actually a little too big. Let's go down to 0.5, right? So that's maybe a little bit better. And now you can see the link, you can see the two turtles, right? They're all there, right? And now let's see how it actually works. Well, if we ask turtle zero to go forward five, right? You can see, and turtle zero is the brown one going up, they just jump straight up and the green one follows it. And in fact, if we ask turtle one to go forward five, it moves over in that direction, right? And takes the brown turtle along with it. Now let's make this a little more obvious. We'll ask the turtles to put their pens down, right? And then we're gonna ask turtle um, zero to go back five, right 90 degrees, forward five, right? And as you can see, you know, turtle zero does what you'd expect. It goes back five turns right 90 degrees and goes forward five, right? And then turtle, the green turtle did the same thing, kind of, until um, this point. So it kind of went back five, right? Straight along the same line that the brown turtle was. But then when the brown turtle rotated 90 degrees, it had to come over here to kind of reflect that new location. And then from there, it moved forward this way, right? Um, so that's just a, you can see how you know you could use this to create a meta agent that was composed of other agents. Um, so that's it. Okay, so besides uh, meta agents, there's another term that's used uh, in the literature sometimes, which is proto agents. And proto agents are agents that aren't really fully realized yet, right? That they don't have all their own autonomous actions, behaviors, um, and properties, right? And we often construct them within the model as regular agents because at some point they may uh, become a full agent. So there isn't, a, there isn't like a class of proto-turtles or anything like that, right? We just create a, another agent and then we add it in. To give you a clear example of this, uh, one of the first agent-based models I worked on was a model of suburban sprawl. Uh, and in that model, we were primarily focused on modeling the, uh, the residential users, the, the, the homeowners, right? Um, and so we looked at where they were going, but we also realized that we needed to model the development of things like you know restaurants and uh, businesses and places of employment. And so we had a proto-agent class called the service center. And the service center didn't have its own desires or its own actions it was trying to take, but instead simply followed the last residential user into the model, right, and located near them. Uh, and so this kind of gave us a good proxy for how um, the, uh, the, the service centers would develop without having to fully model them, right? Um, and so a lot of times you want to consider that some of your agents might not actually need to be full agents, right? They could be just represented as proto-agents. Okay, so that's it for uh, today. Uh, in the next uh, video, we're gonna talk about agent cognition.